Hey everybody, we're here at the Echo booth. We are uh, looking at some battery power stuff here. They've got the new E-Force uh, 56 volt battery systems. I'm I like I'm on the phone with the sod farm. I got to push a sod order back next week. I'm on hold, so I'm waiting on them to come through. But I got to get this stuff shot because the show's going crazy. People everywhere. It's nuts. That makes you dizzy. I should hold still. Put that on speakerphone so everybody's still here. Um, Columbus Turf Nursery. Good folks taking care of us there. I like his top panel chainsaw. We've got like Echo gave us one of these a long time ago, and then we bought three or four more for the company for the guys just dust off tops of retaining walls. It's before we lay new courses or whatever. I'll grab that bell lower and I'll go up and blow my gutters out even before. I go somewhere to an event or something. I don't smell like two-stroke fuel. I don't smell, uh, you know, like I've been, been working out uh, in the lawn all day. I can do stuff like that. I want to show you the, the Echo Autonomous Mower here, which we're coming around. Still checking this out. And oh, so um, we got to keep the business going while we're doing it. Our job, we were supposed to do that earlier this week, and the guy said we didn't have time to do it. All that stuff. Hey, um, this is one of these big autonomous mowers. This, oh, hey, we can spin this around. That's cool. This is a big one. And this is the stuff you're going to see take over. Sorry, gentlemen. This is the stuff you're going to see take over. Uh, Brittany, our lovely price is right now. Oh, you're, you're, you got a job. You got a job. Uh, Bluebird here used to run Bluebird aerators back in the day. These things are instruments of the devil. It's way too hard to work to do aerating that way. Don't do that. Um, I like this dual fuel. This is smart. Generator runs on propane and or uh, gasoline, I'm gonna presume. That is sharp, that's smart. These are easy to come across. You can run this indoors theoretically, I don't know. Don't hold me. Propane can be run indoors theoretically or not? I wouldn't recommend it. You will, they don't recommend it. Don't do it, folks. So, um, back. run back over to, to Echo here, knock out a few things. I really like the, uh, the top handle saw concept because uh, we don't do a lot of tree felling or anything like that but we do um you know a little bit of you know debris removal or whatever and so the guys have one of these saws real handy you know just a quick you know just a quick buzz in here for a top handle now the arborists love these you know for obviously being up in the trees and doing the arborist stuff but even i'm thinking just for you know quick uh, quick trim up and stuff like that i want to get a top handle saw i've got a husqvarna 545 xp for actually dropping my trees and stuff like that um, but that's, um, we actually have a good conversation on the Kid Contractor podcast about this. I don't remember what we called it, but we talked with one of the Echo guys, actually, I believe Ken there, um, talking about the future of battery powered stuff and, and where that's going. Miss Britt, battery powered stuff, yay, nay. Yeah. You just got to understand the expectations. Well, we don't do lawn care prof like professionally, so right. I yeah. can't speak mass, mass. Like me personally, I love it. Right. But using it all day long. At, on our homeowner level, and yeah. then even on jobs, just having that electric blower on the job just to blow off. Yeah. If we're setting new block on top of that, we want to go through, dust that off real quick, set our next course, or you know, before we glue or whatever. That's like awesome. No air filters. No. no, that's an interesting point. And so somebody mentioned no air filters and maintenance on stuff like that. That's a really good point. So uh, we really like that concept. So there we go. All right, here we go. More stuff. Out of the kindness of my heart, I'm going to try to help you know, Blake get his channel up, get those views up. Thank you. you know, uh, Blake Thanks. Albertson, buddy. It's been a while. How, geez, we're so awkward, man. What, man. what are we wrong? doing here? So <laughs> I'm so, I'm like, how do I be Dude, cool? How do am I, I the cool? only one that laughed at the Taylor Swift joke the other night? Probably. I, I thought it was hilarious. Thank you. That's all I need. Is, <laughs> if I make Blake Albertson laugh, that's all I need. That's awesome. It? Or just one person, period. Yeah. Uh, Blake, any big, my big takeaway from the show here has been just in a just an add-on to a tool that we already have is going to change how i do some stuff do you have any like what? what was it it's a paver lifter that i made it was a big tall t-handle thing and to get stuff off the top of the pallet you'd have to thank you camera lady you know it's just it says uh vacuum paper yeah yeah so to get papers on top of the pallet you'd have to take that thing up here to pick it up top but then it's easier to set it down well we're like well to fix that we got a shorter a little shorter t-handle one so it's like it's real short, so it's easy to pick up top, and now when you go to set it, you gotta do this, right? Well, these folks, actually paved tool, I'll give them all the credit they deserve for, they just took their big Taunty handle and put an extra handle midway. So now when you put Dude. it up top, and, it, and it, it's like, like, it's so simple. Dumb! I know, and it it's taken me, 30 years or it whatever. It makes me feel so stupid. If you just came up with that, man. I know, well, it's just like, you could be a millionaire. I, mean, I know, well, like it, this, literally it's nothing. Dude, we made a whole nother special tool. Yeah. And all they did was add a bar to it to grab it midway when it's on top of a pallet. It's just like, yeah. Uh, so good job, Pave Tool. 
You guys are brilliant. That's why they're the brilliant hardscape tool builders. Um, so that for me was it, dude. Yeah, over here on the like the lawn care side, it's battery, robots, yeah. autonomous, remote control. Like that's a huge push. There wasn't very much like new gas equipment. Hmm. Uh, which is kind of weird to see. I think the push from like California, yeah. that whole deal yeah. is really these these companies want to make these products because yeah. California's big man. They yeah. they can just yeah, they demand whatever market, they right? want, you know. Yeah. Somebody had a question, what do you, what happens to all the gas stuff that's there? Where does that go? Like that'll be interesting, right? Is it is there's Dude. all of a sudden this mass exodus of gas powered equipment what eastward? I don't know. It, you know? Like, I mean, what the heck? It's gonna take a long time. <clears throat> to get like the lawn guys yeah. into battery. And I'm right, and, and I'm totally against the mandate in California. And, and what I joked with Sean Spencer this morning about um, was like, you know, if Ohio makes a band like that, let's just say they won't, <laughs> I'm gonna say, you know, Molon Lava, come and take it. You're not taking yeah. my gas powered yeah. anything. Like, yeah, and heck, how do you enforce crazy that? Mandate. Well, you know, the crazy thing about it is like, how do you enforce anything, right? And it's just a gas motor you can't hide. Yeah. And all it takes a couple people and the right agents. So tickets. You tickets. Litter, you litter, that really actually I think would be pretty easily enforced. Yeah. And it's scary. And I'm not for it. I'm all against those kind of edicts and mandates from the top. It's, and when the science isn't exactly there. Because the big argument is on the battery thing and all that stuff. All that lithium is still going to be mined out of the ground. And it takes millions of gallons of diesel fuel just to extract it from the ground, right? Yeah. And so I don't know, and I'd have to no, see the stats. No, it's not better for the environment. No. Because and to make it is... Yeah, the lithium takes tremendous effort to get that lithium ion stuff and all that battery goo yep. out of the ground and refine it and all that crap. And so, like, let's just... I'm all for, you know, being, you know, conservative, uh, pre, you know, conservative preservation and, and uh, conservation of natural resources. I'm the first guy in line. Britain has some of the crazy stuff I do to not throw away. Here's here's one. If you really want to be conscious of things, Blake has to go. I think your drinks. I'm sorry. You're good. I want to hear. Well, so Tell like me. your drinks. When you throw a drink away, and it's got fluid in it, water popping. Throw that stuff in the yard, in the grass, in the gravel, or something. Return that fluid to the earth, the water to the earth, and then throw that empty thing in the trash can or recycling bin, whatever. We can go down recycling bin. But what you're doing is you're taking that weight out of the trash, and all these zillions of gallons of liquid we're throwing away are now sitting in trash trucks and it takes more fuel and more energy to haul all this extra liquid away so that's one little thing that is crazy that i do is you that what, what you mean? do like throw away your lid before you go pee in the bottle oh blake <laughs> I, Brian Fuller, <laughs> that. that is a long story folks and that'll be for another day maybe a podcast but there may or may not have been a, uh, a bottle in a truck that wasn't covered that hey, I, we've it's all a done long it, story well it's a long story well we've all Heat in the bottle and then tried to find the cap. We're like, oh crap! That, yeah, that's so not a good no thing. you folks that work on the right? road and work, you know, work lawn care routes or <laughs> your delivery guys, or whatever, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. And a cap got lost into a certain bottle, and nothing happened. But I caught nothing but flack for the for the incident. Itself. I actually heard he threw out the cap, so he didn't lose it. So well, I guess we'll have to find I out. I throw the story out caps out. all the time. It's a long story. I'll play. Brian and I were joking today about who's going to break the story first. Well, it's Blake Alves. Oh, uh, there you go. Blake, thanks for being on. Good man. to see you guys. Be long care, obviously, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all that junk. Check them out. Dude, these guys are good people. I, I always well, enjoy hanging out you with you guys. You so just saying, like, I love you, Blake, because you're, you're a genuine, honest dude, and uh, I'm always happy to get to do anything with you. Thanks, man. Good all seeing right. you guys. Not Take awkward handshake. Yes! That's GIE 2021. It's a wrap in the... Boy, we're taking Brian to the airport here, I guess. But uh, hey, thanks, man, for me, let, thanks for letting me couch surf the whole week. I know, yeah. <laughs> Brian's like, hey, I don't even know how'd you end up in my my. I was like, you guys got a couch. I had right? plans, don't you know? <laughs> I'm like, here's Brian. twenty bucks, kid. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, kid. Uh, Brian, awesome show. You were. I asked you earlier, I think, on your channel, to your, and I just took over your stuff. But yeah. Talking about takeaways and all that stuff. You were saying the biggest thing, your biggest takeaways and stuff or whatever was just the community essentially, right? Just, just seeing all you guys that watch the content, man, it's, um, well, we don't have it all figured out. You guys know that, but we're just learning. We're, we're trying to pour it out there though, to be honest with you, right? We're trying to help you guys out as much as we can. And thank you for everybody who's came up and said, hey, and like reciprocated, because it's it's nice seeing like a face to the name or whatever they say, right? And uh, it's just been awesome, man. You guys are so cool and uh, so supportive too. I. Um, Sometimes you're out there in the desert for a year, right? You don't really know if anybody's watching or right. or, or who that is. And to see you guys all come say hey to all of us, uh, we we don't take it for granted. So I'm absolutely, just, I'm just thankful, man. I'm thankful. Awesome. Yeah. So for Britt, you got any closing stuff? 2021 GIE. Britt's gas. She's done. <laughs> uh, we'll probably do a podcast on the way home while we're driving, so you get that summary there. But uh, folks, I guess that's it. GIE Expo. It'll be equipped next year. 
Uh, there goes Brian's private jet leaving. You missed your private jet, man. They're out of here. How do you miss a private jet? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't miss a private jet. Uh, but that's it, folks. We'll see you. All right, folks. Hello. We're we're driving home here from uh, Green Industry Expo. We're on 71 northbound, 71 north here now. Um, ETA 7:30 p.m. With from what should have been about I think 5:30 or 6 p.m. from when we left the show. Uh, want to put this out there we did and we were stuck we've been stuck in terrible traffic jams it looked like that for pretty much uh i don't even know about an hour outside of louisville to, to between there and cincinnati it was bad but anybody that drove through that i empathize with you i'm sorry i deal with that That's, that was a bummer but what i but i wanted to say is be sure and check out the Kid Contractor podcast. We just did a road show like we do a lot of times, but it's uh, we went about an hour and a half, something like that. We're gonna break it into two episodes, but it was our summary of the entire show of like what we thought about it, key takeaways, points, thoughts like that. So check out Kid Contractor podcast and uh, check out that episode. It'll probably just be called GIE Review or something like that. You got a good title for it? I'll work on it because people only listen because of the title. That's true. You gotta have a good title. So. With that said, um, check that out and um, and you know give us your thoughts, leave comments, whatever, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody at the next big event. So, since 1984, we had only five thousand dollars in uncollectibles. That's awesome, Bruce. I think that's a good closing right there, man. Well, I appreciate you reaching out to me. I, I like to see you know you have really done some good things with your business. You also have to, you've done something too that is a big, I don't know if people understand it, but to be, you have to be an overcomer. So you had a path 10 years ago, a tough path. You dug a big hole by yourself. Oh yeah. But you overcame it. And so in business you have. And I didn't fully overcome it alone too. My wife stepped in, Britt helped me get through that. So. Yeah. So that's the key. You got you, other people helping you. Right. You're not, you're not always alone. That's right. And so you're going to have overcoming opportunities all the time and um but you can't overcome them you're never alone in business you're never alone